My name is Luke Coons and I'm with RI3D Redux and we're here to talk about the updates to our compliant intake. So the first thing, the first big change that you're going to see from last video is we have shrunk this thing down a lot. We have started, we kind of we're thinking through the idea of making this as small as possible and as light as possible. Being on the end of this arm, we didn't want to have a whole lot of weight on the motor in the back. So we decided to try to figure out how to get it as small as possible. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Stryker is one of the world-leading medical technology companies and is driven to help make healthcare better. Stryker's commitment to innovation has made it a career destination for engineering professionals. Click the link in the description box below or go to careers.stryker.com to discover your next opportunity. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. As you can see, these star wheels, the Andy Mark star wheels, are the same as they were last time. Uh, we really liked the way that they help gra grab and guide the cone and the cube. And then we're using these three inch Andy Mark compliant wheels to help keep the cone and the cube secured in place as it enters into the robot. Um, we used the rev bars here for basic structural mounting. So we, that gives us our fingers and then we attach to the frame that way. Um, and then most of the bearings are from ThriftyBot. So really some of the big changes that I would I like to see and kind of the main structure of this is when you're these fingers are kind of on surgical tubing here so when they extend out they can form and help mold to the cube whether either way it goes in so uh, you don't have to worry about pneumatics or anything else you just have to worry about your arm being stuck out you spin your wheels and then it'll intake and do the rest so uh, kind of that touch and go scenario um, it's also a lot light, lot lighter weight than the first iteration, which really helps out with um, figuring out your balancing mechanism based off this thing being at least a couple feet outside your uh, your robot. So I'm gonna go ahead and shove a cube, and you'll see the surgical tubing and how it'll form to the cube. And then we can raise our arm up and outtake wherever we need to go. And then same thing with the cone. It will form to whatever way we need it to go. So it picks up the cone, and then we've got the compliant wheels that help kind of grip it in place so it doesn't move at all. You can raise it up to where you need to outtake, and then go ahead and fire. This is very good if you're picking it up from the loading station or from the ground if you're specifically in autonomous. But to be able to place the cone onto one of the pegs, you would have to pick it up upright, but if you're placing it on the ground from anywhere, we can try to just pick it up in this orientation here. Doesn't really pick it up. You might be able to get lucky and just place it on the ground, but it doesn't orient the cone in any other direction. You have to pick it up from the upright orientation. I would say for right now and how it looks, I, I like the way and how small it is and how well that it's Basically, the basic design of this and how easy it was to assemble. It doesn't. There's not a whole lot going on besides the two motors and then surgical, surgical tubing. So it's great for teams that are just you know getting started and trying to figure out what a good start for an intake is. Um, you might. We were also playing around with adding a couple other sets of wheels, either in the back here or on or some friction material on this back, just to kind of help center the cones. But that would be something that we need further, further testing and we don't have time for that. Hi, my name is Steven Carmain. I'm the head coach of the Livonia Warriors, Team 2832. And one of the quick features we just added was a time of flight sensor inside our intake. So when we start pushing pieces in, it'll actually stop the intake and that way we're not constantly feeding pieces in. Uh, one of the issues we did see with this is um, sometimes the pieces won't come exactly where the time of flight sensor is. So make sure you give a little, uh, a little uh, buffer zone so that when you see the gap for the pieces, you're still okay. Like right here, there's a little gap where the sensor is versus where the cone is. So as long as you give yourself enough gap, it stops exactly where it needs to. So 
Teams interested in using the time of flight sensor, they're useful for a couple things. One, exactly right here, once we have our game piece in there, we want to stop our motors before the game piece uh, ruins our mechanisms. We're actually using a second time of flight in the elevator. If we can raise the elevator a little. We're using a second one to know where the elevator position is so that we know at power up how far how high it is and we can set soft limits to make sure we don't ram it too high or too low. Another possible option for teams if you don't want to use a time of flight sensor, Rev sells a color sensor and then you could actually know, hey I picked up a purple object or I picked up a yellow object much like last year knowing which color cargo you had. So this is another option if teams don't want to use a time of flight sensor. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to First Updates Now to stay up to date on all of this RI3D Redux videos. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first to register your team. Stryker is one of the world leading medical technology companies and is driven to help make healthcare better. Stryker's commitment to innovation has made it a career destination for engineering professionals. Click the link in the description box below or go to careers.striker.com to discover your next opportunity. Thank you to all of our suppliers and sponsors for the Robot in 3 Days Redux and Kettering Bulldogs programs.